I'm here to solve this cave by Roger Barkin, who is the author of our Colossal Cave Collection. The theme here is even, and this is one of his puzzles which has only even digits. Um, we'll start by just looking at these twos that have a diagonally adjacent clue. They'll have to extend into that uh, cell to get to the number, so the cells on the opposite sides of those twos are always going to be outside the cave. We've got uh, some other values then that look like they'll become interesting. For instance, this eight coming down can only take as many as four cells vertically, so it's be five, six, seven, eight. So always take this cell, this eight coming down has six, seven, this will be an eight cell. So different ways you can chip away like that. Um, this eight in this position can take as many as four vertically, so we'll always intercept this clue, but four, five, six, seven, eight, and again, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we can force in both of these directions, these things. Um, this two has to connect into the rest of the cave and notice if it came down, it would then block itself off. So it uh, comes up instead of down. This cell gets unused, these get filled in. The six now has to take these cells to get completed. You get this pattern then. We've got another situation now with this six, which is getting blocked off. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six will always have to be taken. This six can take as many as three to the right, one, two, three, but can't take a fourth because it would connect in. So this is three, four, five, six, just taking maximums. Um, let's come back now to this, this eight, just uh, while we're looking, we'll actually see, I'll, I'll sort of mark this a different way now. One key, key thing to recognize is when we know we have at least one unused uh, outside of the cave cell in a group. And so notice that if this eight came down one more, it would absolutely have to not use a cell because it couldn't grow all the way up to size four. But this is an impossible pattern. You can't have a cave that has a checkerboard show up. So when I have an unusable cell that's near a, a place that's on off, I actually can extend into it. And so that's a useful thing to observe because it's going to force um, some conclusions like now I have to have this 8 come further to the left than I had before. So 5, 6, 7, 8. This now is another checkerboard pattern. So this has to be inside the cave. That completes the 2 around it. This 8 coming down can't take as many cells as the 6. So we'll always have to take some cells in this direction. And doing that, we'll see we actually have fulfilled this 8 clue. We're going to get exactly one cell coming off here. But these uh, shaded cells have to get to the border of the grid. So I can mark this in. These eights are now complete. This eight here is completed if I mark in these cells. This two doesn't want to now take the cell anymore, so it's out there. Shaded cells need to get away. This two is now finished. So this all looks reasonable. We've got the start of a checkerboard pattern here. This must be inside the cave. We finish off this four clue. Uh, we have this eight clue is going to need to take some cells vertically. So it's got six, seven, eight, but in doing that, it finishes off the four like this, and it actually has finished itself off as an eight. This clue has to take all the cells left for it to get all the way up to six. This eight has seven cells. It doesn't take this one because that would get all the way to nine, but it takes this one. The six coming down gets to six cells using these. Um, this four has to take at least one more. This two has to come down to get out now. Got a potential checkerboard pattern here. Just enough space for the six to get filled. This four has two cells, this would be three, but always take this, and now actually has four used. This four can take this cell, but not that cell. Um, this six, we need to get another cell in, and you've got two options here, but the only way the six for is large enough is taking this one and marking that outside the cave. So some different uses of cave steps in, probably a key consideration once you know about the checkerboard patterns, just seeing how this eight and four have a pincher against them when we knew for sure that these cells were in and out of the cave. The eight couldn't come to the cell, which would mark this unused because you'd form an out, out, in, in checkerboard in that space. So some of these different notations like marking the edges of cells uh, can be pretty key. So I hope you got something through this video that will help you for later cave puzzles this week and even for other puzzles, as I mentioned in Roger's book, uh, Colossal Cave Collection. We'll see you again soon.